Rock and Roll Geek Show 662. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Saturday, October 17th when I'm recording this show, and it's 8.50 p.m. Thought that I would uh, do a show on a Saturday night, sit around on a Saturday and play some rock and roll with my friends, and that's you, my friends. Let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to play something from, what do I want to play? Uh, oh, I got an email from Jim S., Rock and Roll Toothbrusher. Uh, it says, Michael, I'm wondering what you thought of the new Michael Monroe record and if you're going to be doing a track by track of it. I haven't heard it yet, although I need to jam it soon. Uh, Jim S., I'm not sure if I'm going to do a track by track of it yet. I have to listen to it a lot more because, um, yeah, because I just haven't I haven't soaked it in enough. But we're going to soak in a little bit of it together right now. I'm going to play something from the new Michael Monroe album called Blackout States. This song is the sixth track of the album. It is called Good Old Bad Days from the Michael Monroe Band. Oh, hold on a second. I'm having a situation. All right. All right. Brand new Michael Monroe, Good Old Bad Days. The record is called Blackout States. Here you go. In the good old bad days, we've never learned The only way was up, down, crash and burn 
there you go. Brand new Michael Monroe. All right, I'm going to thank some donors for the uh, the generous donations to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Without your donations, friends, this show would not survive, so I appreciate anybody who's donated. There's a donation link on the homepage at rockandrollgeek.com, or just rockandrollgeek.com, or however you want to spell it. It should take you to rockandrollgeek.com. Uh, let me see if I can find some background music to play. I think I'm going to play some uh, brand new winery dogs in the background. I haven't heard this. Uh, You know, I'm not a huge winery dogs fan. I did a track by track of their first album. I should probably do a track by track of this one. Uh, I probably will. I have a lot of a lot of records that I need to do track by track of. New Michael Monroe. Probably should do a Queensryche track by track. I should do the new Winery Dogs. The brand, the new Brian Adams, I should do a track by track because I think it's surprisingly good for people who may not like Brian Adams. There's a lot of them that I need to do. I just got to sit down and do these things. I guess I need to have another Dog Days of Podcasting so I can just do one every day. But it's a matter of getting time to do it. So, all right. In the background, I'm going to play some Winery Dogs. The new album is called Hot Streak. Oh boy. All right, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate to everybody who donated this month. Ah. See if it gets to some new. I'll I'll just let this roll. Thank you to. Oh, here we go. That singing that doesn't that doesn't turn me on. It's like the Miles Kennedy style of vocals. I mean, he's a great singer. He's got a technically he's got a good voice, but wow, that's a complicated sounding music, huh? It's just it's just too good of a voice. There's not enough. There's not. It's hard to explain. I mean, listen to Michael Monroe, and then you listen to this. All right. Thank you to everybody who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show this month on Patreon. There's, a, I don't know if you know what Patreon is. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a website where a lot of people, uh, podcasts and stuff, get donations. Uh, so I figured I'll make a Patreon account. Dave Slusher moved on, moved over to my Patreon. So thank you, Dave Slusher, my podcast mentor, which, by the way... Uh, we just completed episode two of the Mad at Dad podcast, a new podcast experiment with me and Dave Slusher, my podcast mentor. It's kind of, I guess, kind of a, n- a new good, clean fun. Except was with Dave Slusher. We're just shooting the shit for an hour or an hour, or an hour and a half. So we did episode two. It's called Mad at Dad. You can find that at madatdadpodcast.com. We've been doing it every Monday night. We have a live stream going, and we have people in the chat room and stuff. I don't think I'm going to be doing it this Monday because uh, I'm supposed to go to, to Hailstorm with a um, friend of the show, Todd Cunningham. But Dave Slusher from Patreon, thank you, my podcast mentor, for donating on Patreon. He donated On Patreon, it, it takes uh, money every episode, and you can set the cap on how many so i donate to dave slusher's podcast i donate five dollars an episode and it's maxes out at twenty dollars so i'm pretty sure that's what he did to mine so thank you dave slusher i take this into this fine ticate to you also on patreon thank you to robert harvey for the two dollars every episode and on the paypal link Thank you to Richard Strom for the fi- All right, I'm not I'm not loving this a little bit too much. I'm gonna see if I can just put it. I'll put it on the title track. It's like jazz rock. It's like how complicated can we make our music? How many people want more? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you to Richard Strom for the five dollar donation. I take a sip of this fine tecate to you, Richard Strom. Ah, thank you to Dale Roller for the five dollars. Thank you to Jero Carroll for the five dollars every month. Thank you to Jason Shepard for the ten dollars. Thank you to Adam Gerstein for two dollars. Eh, not 
really, as they say, digging the new hot streak from Winery Dogs. Thank you to Adam, to, uh, I say Adam Gerstein for the $2. Thank you to Todd Cunningham for the $10 every month. Friend of the show, Todd Cunningham, who I'm going to see Hailstorm with. Jeffrey Canaparoli for the $2. Thank you to Stephen Mascord for the $5. I see what else I can find here. War Machine. Well, maybe that's better. Eh. <laughs> Where am I? Thank you to Stephen Masco for the five dollars. Thank you to John Skiller for the two dollars. Thanks to BJ Lisco for the ten dollars. Thanks to Ralph Miller, friend of the show and friend of mine, for the $10. Thank you to Anthony Lascalzo for the $2 every month. Thank you to Bradford Page for the $2. Thank you to Sidman Heidasher for the $5. Thanks to Lasse Satvedhagen for the $2. Thanks to Michael Stevens for $10. Thanks to Patrick Shanahan for the $5. Thanks to Dave Jackson in the School of Podcasting for the $10 every month. Thanks to Chris Stanley for the $10. Thanks to Dan McBride for the $5. Thank you to bon- John... B- Thank you to John Bavari for the $5. All right. I, I, I just keep moving on and moving on. All right, here, fire. How about that? Maybe that's better. All right, a little mellow music now. Thanks to John Bavari for the $5. Thank you to Peter Spark for the $2. Michael Mack, friend of mine and friend of the show, who had us at the St. Pat St. Lucie's Fun Fest last week. Thanks to Michael Mack for the $2. Thanks to Chris Harrison for the $10. He sings out of the side of his mouth, too. It's called, that's, I think that's called the pickle and mouth syndrome. And I feel so Thank you to Chris Harrison for the $10. Thanks to Din- Delirium Records for the $5. Thanks to Mario Zoth for the $2. Thank you to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thanks to Jeff Feelalilaki for the $10. Thanks to David Ivey for the $5. Thanks to Adrian Bashan, Bosch Rock in the Forums for the $2. Thanks to Greg Long for the $5. Thanks to Dave Franco for the $10. Thank you to Dean Gillespie for the $5. And finally, thanks to James Venners for the $10. A little light on the donations. Although I'm not complaining, but your donations are much appreciated, friends, even though they're a little light this month. But barely pays the bills. But thank you again, friends, who donated. If it wasn't for you who donated... This show would die a horrible death. Alright, let's just let this song roll out. Maybe this is not so bad. Uh, this is not too bad. One more final sip of this Tecate to everybody who donated. Ah.
No, I'm not laughing with you, uh, Richie Kotzen. Yeah. Oh. That reminds me. I got this great audio comment. It's all a dream. Yeah. Don't. Uh, referring to my singing here, so let this finish. There you go. Brand new winery dogs. Fire. Fire. All right. A lot of comment from somebody. Here we go. Let me, play, let me push, get the spinning beach ball going here from, I, from uh, my shitty ass computer. Yeah, this is Dan from Atlanta. Dan from, hi, Dan from Atlanta. Let me rewind it again. Yeah, this is Dan from Atlanta. I appreciate the show. I listen to it a lot when I'm driving. Uh, just a couple of comments, I'm sure. Well, you've thank you, Dan from Atlanta. I've heard this before. The volume between you playing music or doing audio calls versus you busting in and singing is extremely annoying. Different. In okay. other words, your voice is blaring, uh, and it's very hard to take back and forth. And uh, I know. So when I'm talking. I'm blaring, and when the music's playing, it's not as loud. And when an audio comment's playing, I'm way too loud. It doesn't sound like I'm way too loud in my headphones. So if that's the case, friends, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com, with the subject line, the Dan from Atlanta is right, you are very terrible on the microphone and your voice is way too loud. Put that on the subject line. <laughs> All right, back to you, Dan. I think you're in a band, but I don't... Oh, let me back it up here. Back and forth, and uh, I know you're in a band. Uh, back it up farther. I think different. there's a point made here. In other words, your voice is blaring, uh, and it's very hard to take back and forth. And uh, I know you're in a band, but I don't think you're a vocalist. Uh oh, <laughs> he doesn't think I'm a vocalist. Uh, stop the singing. Stop the singing. Stop the singing. Stop the singing. Dan from Atlanta says, stop the singing. I'm not a vocalist. He doesn't think I sing well. Huh. Uh, just a little... Uh, oh, my, little, little. Uh, the critique is fine, but maybe you should let the music play okay. and then critique. D uh, I like, uh, like I say, I like the show, but please quit screaming into the microphone. Uh, ah! Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Dan, uh, first of all, I'm not really, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it com comedic by not singing that good. Although I am a fantastic singer. I have a voice. I've been told that I have the voice of an angel, uh, Dan from, um, Atlanta. So, um, uh, other than that, have a good day. Okay. Thank thanks you. Dan from Atlanta. <laughs> You're not a vocalist. I think that is the title of the this episode. Let me make a note of that. You are not a vocalist. Okay, there you go. All right. Thank you, Dan from Atlanta. You too can leave me an audio comment and critique. Area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Or you can send me an MP3 to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com like this person did. Hey, Michael. Uh, how is it hanging? It's hanging super great. Couldn't be better. Is this Chris Capel? Uh, this is Eric the oh. Rock and Roll Plebe here. With oh, Eric the, Eric the Rock and Roll Plebe. Nice to hear from you, Eric. Just a quick cheap trick show review. Oh, good. Uh, let me take a sip of this fine habanero peppers India Pale Ale huh. by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Okay, California. I will join you with a Tecate. <sighs> ah! That was as a toast to you, who I credit for getting me into cheap trick. Huh. I was kind of just a casual greatest hits type fan, but um, oh, you talk speaking of cheap trick, I'm sorry to interrupt Rock and Roll Plebe, but uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations came out. I'll get back to your I'll get back to your show review in a, in a couple minutes, uh, Plebe. 
The 2016 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees are, drum roll, uh, Cheap Trick is nominated. The Cars. All right, here, I'm going to go through everybody on the list, and we'll talk about them all. The Cars. Should the Cars be nominated? Well, let's see how many. Let me see if I can pull up um, uh, the Cars here on my iTunes. They had a lot of hits. Do the Cars deserve to be nominated? Oh, by the way, you can vote this year. So the Cars. Let me see if I can find Cars on my iTunes. I'm just going to. They're greatest hits. So they had a shitload of hits. Let's see, the car, how about this one? That first Cars album is a classic. Uh, They had this one, also from the first album. Best Friends Girl, this one from the first album. I think that entire first, yeah, an entire first album was a hit. Every song. This one. Uh, this one. This one. Seven songs on that first album were major hits. Uh, then they have this one. Shitload of hits from the car. So on that alone, I kind of think the cars might deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can vote, and I think you can vote for five artists. Uh, this one. They had a lot of catchy tunes. Uh, so I would vote. So I voted for the Cars to be in. You can vote for. Uh, you can vote for five. Like I said, you can vote for five artists, and you can vote as many times as you want. I'm not really a fan of voting as many times as you want because it's gaming the system, and some of these bands can like um, just do bots and just keep voting and voting and voting. But the Cars, I think, deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I'm going to vote yes on the Cars. Chic. Once again, nominated. I think Nile Rodgers, was, wasn't he in Chic? I think. I think Nile Rodgers is already in the Hall of Fame. Is that who's in Chic? So I said Chic is not rock and roll, so pfft, they do not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Chicago? That's a tough one. I guess Chicago kind of, I mean, they're, they're, they, they've had a lot of hits. And I'm on, the, I'm on the fence with that one, but I guess they probably should. Cheap Trick! Nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Finally, they were considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Should Cheap Trick be in? Fuck yes, Cheap Trick should be in. They should have been in a long time ago before a million other bands who were already in there. Deep Purple is also nominated again. They were nominated before and they didn't make it in. Yes, Deep Purple deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Very influential metal band, hard rock band, whatever. So yes on Deep Purple. So, so far, I voted yes on the cars on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, on rockhall.com. I voted yes on Cheap Trick. I voted yes on Deep Purple. Janet Jackson? Fuck no. The JBs? I don't even know who the JBs are, so I'm saying no. Shaka Khan? Nothing against Shaka Khan, but no. Shaka Khan does not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Los Lobos? Are you fucking kidding me? Los Lobos, they have, they have, they're, Los Lobos are basically a one hit wonder and they, their hit song is a cover of La Bamba. So no on Los Lobos. Steve Miller Band. Do I have any Steve Miller? Steve Miller Band has a lot of hits. Let me see if I can pull up Steve Miller. If, if I have any Steve Miller on my, um, iTunes. I don't have, of course I don't. <laughs> Thought I had some. Steve Miller, keep on rocking me, baby. I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. Sorry, Dan from Atlanta, but I'm singing. I'm a midnight toker. He sees a story about Billy Joe and Bobby Sue. Two young lovers who had... No, I'm not a good singer. 
who had nothing better to do. Uh, keep on rocking me, baby. I right, already do that one. So Steve Miller had a lot of a lot of hits, a lot of hits. So yes, on Steve Miller band, I think he deserves Nine Inch Nails. No, Nine Inch Nails does not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not at least not yet. I saw Nine Inch Nails once live, and they were fantastic. I, I'm not a Nine Inch Nails fan, honestly. I'm not, but uh, they're really good live, and it was kind of uh, I liked all the violence and stuff on stage, and it was very. Um, Kind of inspiring watching Nine Inch Nails perform. But no, they do not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. NWA, <laughs> I guess they're in because they're nominated because of Straight Out of Compton. So no, not NWA because it's not called the Rap Hall of Fame. I know people say, oh, if you say that, you're an asshole. You don't know what you're talking about because it's just about music. No, it's not about music. It's called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's not rock and roll. So no. Rap, yes, but they're not rock and roll. The Smiths, no, the Smiths do not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll of Fame. Was Morrissey in the Smiths? I don't know. I don't know anything about more about the Smiths. So maybe, maybe eventually they should they should be because I guess they were influential. But I, I I'm not voting for the Smiths. The Spinners, no. I don't even know what songs the Spinners have, but uh, I'm sure they probably had a lot of Motown hits or whatever. But I vote no on the spinners. Yes, the band called Yes. Should they be in the Rock and Hall of Fame? Uh, yes kind of was like one of the first prog rock bands. They influenced a lot of bands, and they had a lot of hits. They, I'll be around about. Uh, owner of the Lonely Heart. Okay, I'm going to stop singing because Dan's going to call in again and cuss me out. So I voted yes for, for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So let's see how... The uh, what the tally is so far results for the 2016 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominee fan vote. So far, the number one vote getter with 23 percent, 20 actually 23.51 percent, with 37 million 395 thousand 667 votes is Chicago. They they're the number one vote getter. Coming in at number two. I'm going to take a sip of this fine Tecate. Ah. Coming in at number two on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2016 nominee fan vote is... The Cars with 16.19%. I think The Cars have a... Have a uh, they're doing a social media push or something to try to get a lot of votes because uh, Cars over, over Cheap Trick... But I, like I said, the cars probably deserve it, but not before Cheap Trick. With 25,752,655 votes, the cars are number two. Number three, the band Yes with 16.17%, very close behind the cars. With 25,725,197 votes. Coming in at number four is Steve Miller Band. With 15.96%, which is 25,039,226 votes. Coming in at number five, Deep Purple, 15.94, a very close fifth, at 25,360,842 votes. So if it was to stop right now, those five would be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Is that, is that right? Am I right on that? I think I am. So those are the top five. And here's number six, Janet Jackson. What? Then at number seven, Cheap Trick with 1%. 270, uh, 2,079,872 votes. Then number eight, The Spinners. Nine, Shaka Khan. Ten, Chic. The JBs, NWA, Nine Inch Nails, Smith, and Los Lobos. She, once again, Cheap Trick won't be in the Rock Hall of Fame. Well... Keep voting, friends. If you want Cheap Trick to be in the Rock Roll Hall of Fame, go to rockhall.com slash voting or something. Just go to rockhall.com and there's somewhere a link somewhere where you can submit your votes. <sighs> well, okay. Back to you, rock and roll plebe. Talking about them all the time and your, especially your track by track of the 1997 album. Hooked me so. Oh, speaking of track by tracks, uh, I was on the most recent. I don't think it's come out yet. Uh, Cheap Trick. What is it? Uh, Cheap Talk Trick Chat or something like that podcast. We did special one, and I was 
in the minority. The other two guys, B.J. Cramp and uh, Ken Mills, hate Special One, but I think, think it's one of their best albums. So, yeah, go listen to that if it's out yet. Cheap, I think it's on the Podkist podcast feed. On that. Okay, oh, back up, hold on, this back is my, I don't know what he said. I was kind of just a casual greatest hits type fan but um you talking about them all the time and your especially your track by track of the 1997 album that hooked me so on that is he kissing my ass this is my first show to see cheap trick wow okay tuesday september 22nd and they played in glenside Pennsylvania. Uh, I apologize in uh, advance, right Dan from Atlanta. Philadelphia at I'll try to Keswick back up from the theater. mic this time. It's a nice little old theater that probably holds about a thousand people. Need you love, and, need uh, you love. I don't think it was sold out, but it was fairly packed. I the got headlined? there a little bit early so I could get a couple seven dollar beers. There you go. That's, not, that's a good price for beers, at actually. 730 and no opening band. I had really good seats, uh, stage right, uh, Rick Nielsen's side, about seven rows back. Uh, but when I got there, there was this big 350-pound guy who smelled like cigarettes kind of taking up two spots. And I don't know. I, it, I, I, the older I get, the more like I like going to shows, but I just can't even tolerate the people. Yeah, I, hey, tell me about start. it, man. I went to the darkness on Sunday, which was, by the way, fantastic, and I did a live bootleg of it. I haven't played it yet. I haven't done a show on it yet, but they were fantastic, and there was a one of those kind of people there that decided to hang all over me and sweat all over me and bounce all over me and put his arm around me, and the guy was just having a good time, but he was he was doing it at my expense, and I said something to him. It's like, nicely and he decided to be an a-hole about it but yeah i won't get into that but yeah i understand what you're saying rock and roll plebe talking to me and he's bragging about how he'd gone backstage and he met rick nielsen one time and he sold him some gibson guitar with a rare headstock and he started me off being a little bit annoyed but once the music started going I was okay, and then like seven, eight songs in, the dude left, so I was able to move over, and eventually huge, I... Huge Cheap Trick fan, he left after seven songs. Jumped up even closer and got near the front. Um, so the show, I'm just, I'll read off the song listing, I didn't write it down, and some of the songs I'm not even that familiar with, but um, it started with... Uh, Hello there. Uh, Japanese kind of radio yeah, sounds yeah. and um, the greatest band in the whole fucking world, Cheap Trick. Audio clips from Cheap Trick on The Simpsons. Yeah, they've been doing that for years and then the now. Band came out and started off with "Hello there, ladies and gentlemen." Hello there, ladies. All right, and then right into "Hello kitties." Hello kitties, what you gonna do when the bop bop? Big eyes. Big eyes. Do, 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 do. I'm sorry, Dan from Atlanta. Uh, then look out. Look out, look out, look out. California man. Going to a party. And the show was rocking. Rick Nielsen was just moving all over the place, having a great time, throwing picks out. Every, I'm you know, sure you got at least five, one, six, right? seven picks every song. and. You know, changing guitars, he, you know, the Gibson, and then your the first time seeing he them, had, like one that's shaped like a, like a square, a box with the pictures. Yeah, that's on the it. Rockford guitar. Um, they did. If you want my love, if you want, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, Dan from Atlanta. You're right. I can't sing. If you want, um, I sang a lot last night with Featherwood, so my voice is a little bit shot. That's my excuse, all right? If you want my love, you got it. All right. <laughs> and then they went into the... the, the <laughs> What's that? Little riff in, uh, into On Top of the World. You're on top of the world, you're on top of the world, and you can't get any higher. And Borderline. On the Borderline. Ain't that a shame? Well, you bro, I don't. That's the one that I not. I could. I could do without them playing that one anymore. 
And then they. Uh, it's not they a bad set though. Someone's request in the audience. They did the. Uh, they did magical mystery tour. Yeah, they do that a lot. Roll up for the mystery tour. Uh oh. <laughs> I think Dan just unsubscribed. I apologize, Dan. Melded with a little bit of the I am the walrus. I am the walrus. Um, it was all right. Uh, next up, they did Daddy Should Have Stayed in High School. Nice. From the first album, uh, right? Uh, the In Crowd, a cover song. Wow, these are these are pretty... Uh, that's good. I don't know what the In Crowd is, but I, I'm like it. And then it. Um, Tom did a little, bit, a little bass solo. Yeah, and then I know what I want. And then they uh, did... Um, I know what I want and I know like how to get it. song, like Heroin or something. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. No, here comes my man. Give, here comes my... Uh, waiting for my man. I'm waiting for my man. Um, then the flame, I want you to want me. Uh, the flame. How's the flame go? Uh, you, you know how it goes. I want you. Okay. <laughs> and Dream Police to start. To, the Dream to Police! The, the set. Um, uh, then, of course, the encore, they came right back out and they Surrender. did a new song. Oh, new song. That I looked up and I guess they've just started playing it. Um, uh, the end of last year into this year. It's called Bang Zoom Crazy. How is that? Uh, I have not heard it yet. It's kind of heavy. Like the riff kind of is Led Zeppelin ish a little bit to me. I don't know. I'd have to hear it some more to really get What's to What's it called? It. Bang Zoom? All right, I'm going to look it up on YouTube here. See if I can find it. Uh, YouTube. Uh, Cheap Trick Bang Zoom. Let me see if I can find Cheap Trick. Trick. Bang, okay, bang, zoom, crazy, hello. Let's see, let's see if we can, okay. All right, let's, at Wrigley Field. I don't know how this is going to sound, so. Wait a minute. Please I don't think I don't think that's the best it. fucking rock band you've ever seen. Cheap trick. It's not that bad. All right, all right, that's not that bad. All right, back to you, plebe. Uh, they finished out with Surrender and then yes. Good Night. And it was a good show. It was a great show. I don't know. I, I, I left feeling just like really good well that's yeah, good Nielsen then it was a good show then he's on my guitar hero list now I yes mean, he's really great he's way underrated on guitar he was doing and just like seemed effortless just, whatever seemed like just awesome guy and just playing one-handed and doing all this stuff and i was like Psh. um robin sounded great i mean he's got that you know thing that you've mentioned where he wears those black motorcycle hats the whole show it's kind of weird but yeah and Tom looked good, and I have to say the drummer, he he's just having a great time. That's Rick's that son. Guy, he like looks like a little Zach. like midget or uh, Dax, Sammy I mean, Hagar or something, but he he Dax was Nielsen. awesome, and he just looked like he was having the best time of his life, and I'm jealous of that dude. Um, anyway, that that's it. I uh, went on longer than I thought I'd hear. I'd go and. This, I'm not very good at show reviews, and sorry to bore you and your audience. Yeah. <laughs> thanks again for turning me on the cheap trick, and thank you. Hopefully, friend. they're coming out to San Francisco, and I know you'll be there to see them. So. Yeah, I think they're coming Cheers, again mate. soon. Later. Cheers, mate. Stay frosty, friend. You too can leave me a show review. Area code seven zero six six two one rock. That's area code seven zero six seven six two five. 
And I'll try not to sing, but I'll probably end up singing through it anyway. All right, one more time with the show. This is Dan dance. from Atlanta. I appreciate the show. I listen to it a lot when I'm driving. Uh, just a couple of comments. I'm sure you've heard this before. The volume between you playing music or doing audio calls versus you busting in and singing is extremely different. In other words, your voice is blaring, uh, and it's very hard to take back and forth. And uh, I know you're in a band, but I don't think you're a vocalist. There you go. So please stop the singing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, friend. I don't think you're a vocalist is what they call I don't, I don't think you're a vocalist. Okay. All right. Another show review. For, uh, yeah, sure. Let's do another uh, thing. Oh, here. no, you're a, a fan. Uh, of- oh, back up, back up, back up here. This is from Michael Purse, the rock, uh, I don't know if he's got a uh, rock and roll name. Sitting in a bar in Adelaide. G'day, Michael Butler. How you doing, mate? I'm super great. Couldn't super be better. Great. Couldn't be better. Yes. I could expect no less, mate. A show review for you, one that I thought I would never give you. I know you're a, a fan of Australia's 70s supergroup Skyhooks, uh, as I am, and... As Shirley Strawn passed away many years ago now, the, the great singer. Uh, they played once since they did a uh, just an invite-only show to uh, to celebrate the uh, the 30th anniversary. Huh. Of the okay, band. before I continue Michael Persh's audio comment, I hope I'm not boring the audience, but uh, I'm a huge Skyhooks fan. There was this band, a lot of, most people in the United States have never heard of this band, the Skyhooks. But I was a huge Skyhooks fan. They came to, they did one U.S. tour, I think, and it was only like a two-week tour. And one of the stops was Jacksonville, Florida. And this DJ, uh, I think his name was Dan Bartlett or something like that. I tried to get this guy on my show, and he blew me off, believe it or not, a, a 70s DJ. But this one 70s DJ brought all, he turned, he brought a lot of uh, Australian music to People in Jacksonville's ears. He 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 was a very he was he he championed uh, Australian music. He played a lot of Angels, which we're called Angel City here. He played a lot of Skyhooks. He played probably every album on the Skyhooks record called "Ego Is Not a Dirty Word." So I'm gonna I think. Let me see if I can find the vinyl track of the week thing here. Hold on, I, I'm gonna pause this so I can find my clip. All right. So before I play Michael Purse's Skyhook show review. I'm going to turn you on to this band, the Skyhooks. So I'm going to play a vinyl uh, track. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go! Here we go! <laughs> okay. And now, it's time for the Rock and Roll Geek Vinyl Track of the Week. All right, so this band, this band is called the Sky... They're called Skyhooks, and they put out... The first album that they released in the United States was called Ego Is Not a Dirty Word. Uh, being a kid in the South, where Leonard Skinner hailed from, and a lot of rednecks, uh, this band Skyhooks, you would not think that the Skyhooks would be, would be well received in Jacksonville, Florida. But they opened when they came to Jacksonville once. They opened for Uriah Heep. I liked Uriah Heep. That live album, they toured the shit out of that Uriah Heep live. But opening for Uriah Heep was this band called the Skyhooks. They played their music all the time on Rock 105 in, in Jacksonville, Florida. And so I went out and bought the album, and I, I, this is the exact same album that I bought back in 1975. It's a gatefold album, and there's probably a little bit of uh, marijuana residue in the inside of the gatefold. On the front, it's called Ego Is Not A Dirty Word, the name of the album. And on the front is like a car- cartoon drawing of the band who wore costumes, and they painted their face. And back then, that's when Kiss was just starting to uh, you know, be known. So this band wore crazy outfits and painted their faces, and they were just completely out there. And you open up the gatefold on the inside, and it's got um, a guy on the left with a king, with like a, a king's crown and a, a tutu with boobs that dangle down to his knees, like uh, fake boobs, and 
Another guy who was the bass player, who actually had the bass player on my show, uh, the guy's name was Greg McCainch. I don't know if you don't pronounce his name. Greg McCainch. I had him on the Rock and Roll Geek show, so look for that. That's way back in the archives. And um, the, it's got the whole band. They're wearing crazy outfits, and one of the guys in the band, uh, I believe it's um, Redmond Simmons, uh, Red Simmons, He's passed out and he's got blood all over his face and his outfit is shredded. And there's another guy with a, what looks like a Pope hat on with his face painted. And on the, ins- and on the back of the album it says, Dear Sk- it's like a letter from a fan. Dear Skyhooks, I am not a band mole. I guess band mole means groupie. I don't know. Maybe that's what they call that in Australia. Just, but because you are so fantabulous and so groovy, I just thought that I'd drop you guys a short note to let you know I think of you all day at school. Yuck. And all night. I can't sleep because I've been singing, because I keep seeing Fred. Fred is so beautiful and Greg looks very spunky with makeup on. But I... Hope you don't think I don't love you all. I am writing this letter mostly because I've been thinking and dreaming almost about all you guys for ages. And you all make me feel so good. I knew I had to give you guys a memento so you could see how much I love you. And so a little part of... It's, it's in like uh, kids' handwriting. It's just hard to read. A little part of me would always be with you. With the skyhooks. I would love to be all your girlfriends, if you know what I mean. But I hope this is enough... Lots of love and hit records. Love, Denise. And, not, and taped to the letter is a cut-off finger. It says, my warning, a friend. So, that's the, so that is the album. It is, it's Ego is Not a Dirty Word. So I'm going to play this song, and then I'm going to, to turn you on to the Skyhooks. Let's see if I can drop me, unmute my channel here, and then I'll get back to Michael Purse's uh, comment. And by, well, I haven't listened to his show review, but I'm hoping this will give us all a uh, more of an idea of what the Skyhooks were like. This, if you can, if you can find this album, I don't know if, if it's probably way out of print, but uh, look for the MP3s or whatever. On, um, as a matter of fact, if you have the Rock and Roll Geek app, do not look in the bonus content because this album will not be on this episode. Don't look in the little right hand corner with a little uh, E with a circle on it because there will not be a link to where you can download this album. Ego is not a dirty word from Skyhooks. Came out in 1975 on Phonogram Incorporated, which is which is a subsidiary of Poly, Polydor or Polygram Records. All right, I'm gonna, uh, just drop the needle. This is the second song on the album, which is called "Love on the Radio." The first is "Ego is Not a Dirty Word," but so "Ego is Not a Dirty Word" kind of goes into this song. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. So, uh, okay, here you go. They're all groovy rock fans. You're tuned to 3FQ, the friendly one, and I'm going to take you right through until 12 o'clock this evening when the Allentine fun machine will be taking you nowhere. Don't forget, girls, you can get all your cosmetics and feminine things from Hood & Co. Pharmacy, 25 Langtree Avenue, Mildura. Even Granny tunes her little tranny to 3FQ.
It's time for the Rock and Roll Geek Vinyl Track of the right. Week. Uh, that's what that gives you a little bit taste of what the Skyhooks was like. This album, I'm, it's not for everybody. They're kind of out there, but they were they put on such a great show, and they they I, they made me a huge fan of the Skyhooks. This album, to me, top to bottom, is a classic album. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. So, give it a chance. It's I fucking love the Skyhooks. The singer Graham Shirley, his name was they called him Shirley. Uh, his name was uh, his name was Graham Strachan, I think is his, is his whole real name. Uh, but he there's a book about him that somebody sent me because I'm in it, believe it or not, because I had talked about the Skyhooks early in the Rock and Roll Geek Show days. I sang the praises of the Skyhooks a lot, a lot, and. Um, Somebody who wrote the book listened to the show, and they quoted me in the book. So that was kind of cool. All right, so back to you, Michael Purse. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna start the audio comment all over here. G'day, Michael Butler. How you doing, mate? Uh, super great. Couldn't be better. Super great. Couldn't be better. Yes, what yeah. I could expect, no less, mate. Exactly. A show review for you, one that I thought I would never give you. I know you're a, a fan of Australia's 70s supergroup Skyhooks. Yes. Uh, as I am, and as Shirley Strawn passed away many years ago now, the, the great singer, uh, they played once since they did a uh, just an invite-only show to, uh, to celebrate the, uh, the 30th anniversary of uh, their first LP, Living in the 70s, at a pub in Melbourne, uh, quite a few years back, which I was uh, very fortunate to be uh, to be a guest at, and I went over and uh, and Ross Wilson, their record producer from their first three albums, sang with them that night, and it was a great night. But it just so happens, last night they played for the f for the first time since then, so a good ten years at uh, at, at the Palais Theatre in Melbourne. Uh, they played three tunes, and it was uh, it was part of a uh, a tour of um, a television show here in Australia. Uh, SBS is a, a, a broad, special broadcast channel here in Australia. I guess our equivalent of PBS that you have in the United Public States. Public television. And uh, there's a show on there, a music quiz show called Rock Wiz. And yes. it's been a big success. Wasn't, um, wasn't uh, the guy from Living End on that show with Chrissy Amphlett? Uh, what's the guy singer, the guitar player for Chris, for uh, Living In? Why does the name escape me now? Because I'm a huge fan of him. Such a huge fan, I can't remember his name. But yeah, I think I know this, this show you're talking about. I think it's in its 11th season. It's been going forever. They record it in a pub in St Kilda in Melbourne. It's packed out, has been since day one. And uh, it's just about impossible to get a ticket to the taping of the show. So in recent years... Uh, about this time of the year, coming up to Christmas, they've put the show on the road and taken it around to theatres in uh, in the major cities in Australia. And uh, they're doing the same this year, and their, their theme this year is the Australian Rock Music Hall of Fame. So a lot of the guys that have been uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame that are still alive are playing at these series of concerts around Australia. And and part of the, part of the show is like a panel game where they answer questions... So with members of the audience and uh, a music identity. So uh, how this apparently happened, Red Simons, the guitarist, was invited to be the panel on the panel of, uh, of one of these programs. And uh, what normally happens when, uh, when the guest comes out, they'll, uh, they'll sing a song, uh, one of their hits or whatever. So uh, Red Simons being the guitar player and uh, without being too cruel, not much of a singer, he got the whole band together, and <laughs> and it's been uh, abs a whirlwind. No one really saw it coming, so it's uh, it's been unbelievable. I made a very quick trip to Melbourne last night. I've been over over for one night, back the next day. But it was great to see Skyhooks. They played horror movie. Nice. They played oh, no, but, hold on, hold on. Calling. Wait a minute, hold on. Horror movie, one of my favourites. Right, back the next day. But it was great to see Skyhooks. They played... Horror movie. It's a horror movie. All right, I'm going to stop singing. I, now I'm all self-conscious now from Dan, so I'm going to stop singing. They played Ball and Calling from Living in the 70s. Yes. And they played All My Friends Are Getting Married from One of Ego my favorites. Is not a dirty word. One of my favorites. Uh, of course, Ego is not a dirty word. It's the 40th anniversary this year. So there's been a lot of, a lot of, 40th, sort of hype around that. In a 40th anniversary. So I'm 53. So what? I was 13 years old? 
No, that can't be right. It must have came out in seventy. It came out in seventy five. It was probably released in the United States. And I don't know. That's a wow. Okay, I'm old. Australia, which has been very cool. Uh, but also, there is a uh, a three CD package coming out uh, very soon, apparently, to uh, remastered of uh, Living in the Seventies and Ego is Not a Dirty Word and another disc of live stuff. And I will uh, I will probably not you send it yes, to you. Yes, please don't, because that would be just, just wrong. Be wrong, yes. wrong, wrong. Yes, but thank anyway, you. <laughs> please I said, don't, Scott because I need played that. last night. Only three tunes, but it was fantastic to, uh, to see to them see back it. up on stage again. It's been a long, long time. So uh, very cool indeed. Very, Ross Wilson, Ab- very beloved band in, in Australia, by the way. People aren't completely unknown in the United States, but beloved in Australia. Yeah. As I said, took up the reins of the vocalist, uh, and he was their record producer for their first two records, including, yeah. including Duke, the, was the what third they one him. that they made very close to you, mate, in Sausalito in San Francisco in 76. So uh, so there you go, Skyhooks. They were a bit rusty, but uh, hey, it's been a long time, but it was great to see him, and it was a, a great crowd at the Palais and uh, a fantastic night. So uh, Awesome to see these guys back on stage again. It doesn't happen very often. And even if I've got to get on a plane and spend far too much money for two days to go and see these guys, it was worth every cent. Anyway, mate, just a quick one. Hope, you, uh, hope you're well. Enjoying the show. Keep up the good work, man. Stay frosty. No, stay frosty, friend. Michael Purse from the Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide podcast. Like me, a huge Skyhooks fan, and, and he's from Australia. Oh, I think I... Somebody calling me live? Oh, fuck it, I'm gonna pick it up. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, caller. Who's calling? Hey, Michael, it's Joey Rock and Roll from right. Fort Worth, Texas. How you doing? Well, well, Joey Rock and Roll, long time no hear. Still listening every week, though, my friend. Okay, I'll take your word for it. How's it going, Joey? Uh, I am doing well this evening. How are you doing, though, I am Michael? Super great. Could not be better. Thank you for asking. Always. So what, why are you calling this the Rock and Roll Geek Show tonight? Well, I was calling to do an extra, extra special show review. All right. And uh, went out to what Hold I on. thought would be... Lest anyone think that I'm talking to a recording, <laughs> this is an actual recording of a live phone call that I did with Joey Rock and Roll. All right, back to you, Joey. No problem, Michael. See? We are live. Yes. Ro- roving reporter, Joy Rock and Roll, back on the scene for the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Yes. And I do apologize for my long absence. Uh, it just, uh, I don't know why I just can't call like right after a show anymore. I'm just the worst about it now. So, yeah, what happens when you fall in love with somebody? <laughs> not this, I mean, that's not the case because, you know, the, one of the last times I did one, she was there, you know, yelling into the phone at you too. So, it was all fun, you know. It's 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 honestly it's all on me. It's my fault for sure. Well, I but, don't uh, forgive you. No, I'm kidding. Thank I'm you. Kidding. So, uh, and the reason I wanted to call in live, uh, I don't think I'm anything special. I just figured with this kind of special event, you would have questions, and then we could just generally geek out on the event itself. Uh, but uh, I went to what uh, originally this was booked as a book signing for. In my opinion, probably the greatest rock and roll bass player of all time, Dennis Dunaway. Now, the where, did you, Cooper where did you see the adver- Where did you find out that Dennis Dunaway was doing a book signing? Well, I definitely have to give a plug to the guy that made this whole thing happen. It's a guy named Christopher Penn uh, from a place called Good Records in Dallas, Texas. And how is that record store? Is that a good record store? It. Uh, it's 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 good. Uh, it's a little pricey for me. You ever been to Forever Young Records? Forever Young is a good uh, window shopping store. Also very expensive, and they're yeah. very proud of their stuff. It's not that I'm a total cheapo. It's just that you know some places like that, especially Forever Young. Forever Young's terrible. At least good records, you get a good atmosphere. Well, I found some good T-shirts at Forever Young. Some, I found a good Van yeah. Halen shirt, a good Alice Cooper shirt. But go ahead. Yeah, they have good nostalgia items there, but their records are terribly priced. Yeah. Um, yeah. So over good records, uh, basically, this guy Chris, he's a friend of a friend. He's a really good friend of my buddy Randy, who does a Synaptic podcast that I produce. 
Uh, there's a little cheap plug. And this guy, I that as out, I, you know, worry. you see people on Facebook that you don't know, but you see what they like. Yeah. And this guy, I'm like, this guy's a big Alice Cooper fan. And he's one of those guys that'll get the VIP, go to the show, get the picture with the whole family. Like, he's definitely a fan. Uh-huh. So I was like, this is so cool. He's booked Dennis Dunway to do a book signing at, at a store that I, I believe he manages or at least co-manages. And um, this, I'm like, this is great. This is the only guy that would book that. It was just billed as come to Dennis Dunaway's book signing of his new book. Yeah, there was an advertisement. He promoted a lot on Facebook. He had a great hook with it as far as like a good way to make money for them and for Dennis. You buy the book at the store and you get a guaranteed uh, pass for the meet and greet, pitcher, Q&A. I mean, they're going to go the full nines here. So did Dennis Dunaway do a Q&A? Yeah, and what happened was, as time went on, it was like, now not only is it Dennis Dunaway, but this guy's such a big Alice Cooper Group fan, an Alice Cooper fan in general, that he booked Michael Bruce and Neil Smith Wait to come along. Okay, okay, so so the book signing was was Dennis Dunaway, and, and just happened to be sitting there with Dennis Dunaway was Michael Bruce and, and Neil Smith. No, they were definitely advertised in advance for this. So come meet Dennis Dunaway and Michael Bruce and Neil Smith. Did it say they were going to be playing? Well, after a while, they did. Like, it started off as Dennis, and then it turned into Dennis, Neil, and Michael. And then it was like, hey, we think that they're actually going to get together a little mini set and play after signing autographs, kissing babies, taking photos, Q&A, and then they're going to play some now. And now I was going to go already anyway, but now I'm, like, super psyched because... Uh, you know, if you don't know anything about me, who's this asshole on the Rock and Roll Geek Show? Um, Joey Rock and Roll, the Great Oracle. <laughs> I uh, the I hold. I'm a, Alice Cooper is definitely my favorite performer slash writer of all time. Well, the original, the original Alice Cooper group is one of my is is I'm I might be the well I'm probably not the biggest Alice Cooper group fan, but I'm up there. I hold up the original Alice Cooper group. You know, with any of the icons, the Stones, Beatles, <laughs> I what hold have them you. higher than the Beatles and the Stones. I absolutely agree with you on that. I'm, they are just uh, whatever they had, pure brilliance. Just and the wherewithal, the arrangements, just everything that came into place. And of course, don't discount Bob Ezrin, important factor. Uh, but just that run of records, uh, you know, and, at least and the, the early first, records are fine, but four, love it to death the through first muscle four love Bob, or just yeah. First four Baba Ezrum records are as good as any record ever made. As, yeah, as good as the first four Ramones, the first four Black Sabbaths, um, you Better know, what is it, a Beggar's Banquet those. through Let It Bleed or, or, or through Exile on Main Street. You know, those pantheons of classic runs. It's as good or better than any of those records, and I will debate that for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Not with me. I, I think they're better, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so so you go to good records, and you're hoping to see a jam session, so they signs the book. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I just... Uh, it, it took a long time. I was there for hours. Like, I got there early. I thought I got there early, but so there you get there, and there's gear there. set up already. Yeah, and uh, they had this amazing stage, which you can now see photos online, of course, of this event. So if you want to look online while you're listening to this great show, they set up. They they always have this mini stage set up anyway, because they always have a decent amount of bands playing there on a you know throughout the year. So, but it, you know, it's 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 you know the short stages, you know, the where you can like you're in like your face is in their crotch or just a little bit lower, you know, that kind of stage. Right. So they had this whole thing set up. They had three. Uh, homemade electric chairs made up for them to sit in while they did the signing. You know, <laughs> guy went all is, out. What's that? The guy went all out. Yeah. So the table and, was on the stage with amps behind them. Yeah, and a drum set set up. Which actually, I found out that some of the gear, the drum, some of the drum gear, was borrowed by a coworker's drummer of mine. So like, have all these like one degree separations of I know people involved in this thing and I'm just like just giddy about the whole thing. But yeah, they had to borrow some equipment, but they had this whole thing set up, the stage with the electric chairs, plus Neil Smith had his, you know, a classic double bass vintage kit set up. And they had all these balloons blown up, like pink and black balloons, which is imaging for which, Dennis's book. It looks a lot like that. Spelled out so, Alice Cooper, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's spelled out Alice Cooper with balloons. It looked like an old school show, like, 
like just even just the decor of the place, and it just looked like a looked early like the Merv 70s Griffin gig. show. Yeah, it was great. You know, and, or the Merv Griffin or the Mike Douglas show. Yeah, exactly. If they'd have played on that those shows back in the day, it's exactly what it looked like. It's kind of cable accessy almost in a way, if that's even a word. Now I would have been I I would have been creaming my pants at this point. I would have been going, oh. wow. I'm going to see Michael Bruce, Dennis Dunaway, and Neil Smith. This is going to be great. Yeah, and they were all tremendously nice guys. I mean, the live was getting rushed a little bit, but How that's part for there? the course for, you know, any book signing. But the whole point about getting the autograph session kind of done and out of the way was the sooner it's over, the sooner they play. How many people you know? were there? Uh, initially, between 200 and 300 people. That's a lot of people to show up for a book signing. Yeah, and like I said, he promoted the hell out of it. Like every day I would see an update on Facebook. And this was like, you know, five, six months in advance or something waiting for this thing. So every day I'm seeing an update. Buy the book here and get your ticket. Don't don't miss out, you know, the whole thing. So here's the funny thing about it. So, um, so you up had to, to buy the people book showed up for you, the signing. Can you hear me? They get, so, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Sorry. So you buy the book in advance and then you get a ticket to come back later to that to for the actual signing yeah it's a voucher that you get when okay. you buy the book okay. whatever day you buy well, it could you buy the book at right there and just show up i mean could you have just shown up they were still selling books by the time i got there yes okay so they didn't turn anybody away at the door they did not seem to be and like i said about 300 people showed up once the whole thing got going and it's weird because it's like a 12 car parking lot <laughs> In Dallas downtown, uh-huh. so it just finding parking was a bitch. But anyway, um, so everybody gets in there. They get their they get their <laughs> they get their stuff signed, or at least most of the people get their stuff signed. Because I, I know that they did cut the line at one point, but thankfully not before I got my stuff in. And you know, I, I always do that thing where if I have to wait in a line, I could finally actually have time to think about what am I going to ask him or what I'm going to talk to him about. Because you know, they're they're all bored with you're awesome all day long, so. Uh, you know, I talked to Michael Bruce about Beautiful Flyaway from Easy Action because I think that's a really very pretty song, actually, and he played great piano on it. I was like, hey, piano guy. You know, I'm kind of a piano guy myself. So, so you, about you wanted to impress him with some super geek knowledge. Absolutely. Exactly. Was he impressed? <laughs> no, no doubt. <laughs> Did you, so you, you got up there. So, here, so you're in the front of the line. It finally comes to you. Sure. <clears throat> And it's only and it's Dennis and the other two guys sitting at the table, right? Yeah, yeah. It did starts they all with sign Neil. Him or Neil, was just, no, Neil was the first one. Did did they all sign the book? Yeah, they actually all did, and that, and I, I think that's that was right. great because so, I mean they're they're stars of the book. So you, you got know. to Neil, and what did you say to Neil? I told him that I thought Halo of Flies was probably the greatest song ever conceived on on wax, like ever. And he goes, so. "Oh, thanks a lot, man." Next, uh, he, he, he said, "Yeah, <laughs> he goes, thank you." And then he he did elaborate, and I, I'm sure he said this a billion times, even to people like thank me. Thank you. That's one of my favorites. And and also, uh, uh, he's the two things he said. Well, the critics could never say that we couldn't play after that song, because that was them proving to the critics that they weren't just a you know they weren't just Flash. And then I told him, that, and I this was true. I had actually rewatched. The Toronto Festival from 1969, the John Lennon Festival, where the infamous chicken incident occurred. Uh huh. Right. Have you seen that footage? Uh, I've seen the footage of the chicken incident. I never, I haven't seen the entire song. You should go and watch the. Uh, there's, there's only about 13 minutes pro that's uh, that's on YouTube, but it's like the the real crazy end part where they're just basically doing extended jams of you know lay down and die, which was always their jam piece, and Neil is. More of the star of that clip than even Alice is. Neil is just going crazy. He's running around on stage. Yeah, 69 got, would have been uh, way before Bob Ezrin came into the picture. Yeah, two years. Yeah. And this is still like the Frank Zappa era, yeah. uh, if you will. And it, they resemble it quite a bit. And Neil is just, you have to see Neil in this clip. Like I said, he's the star of it. And I told him I had just watched that. And I just kind of looked at him like, dude, what uh, what was that? <laughs> and he goes, a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of drugs. All. A lot of drugs. I, yeah. Okay, and then you get to Michael Bruce, who's next, right? Yeah, and I you know, did the whole beautiful flyaway geek out thing, and he was very you, nice. What did you say to Michael Bruce? 
I just, I just said, hey, hey, Michael, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you that I really think the beautiful Flyaway is is one of my favorite uh, rock piano pieces, and you know, it's, uh, you know, I just really enjoy it, and I like playing it for people, not telling them that it's Alice Cooper, and they can never guess that it is, and that's actually Michael singing on it too. So, and what did he say? He was like, wow, thanks a lot. You well, know, like he, lot, he did seem lot, generally surprised that somebody was talking about this really super duper geeky, obscure song. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to bring up, you know, of course, everybody wants to ask him like, Is he hey, so crack? how come Alice doesn't like you anymore? Right. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, obviously not a part of the super duper Alice Cooper documentary like yeah, at all. I know. And you, did, you didn't ask him any, you didn't ask him that, huh? No, nobody, nobody in my earshot asked him that, and nor did they ask him that in the Q and A. Um, I'm assuming that the journalist that was handling the Q and A might have been asked in advance not to go there, if I had to guess, because that's a pretty obvious thing. It's definitely an elephant in the room whenever Michael's there. Yeah. Okay. So then you get to Dennis. Do Do you know Do you know why? Do you, have you heard anything about why Michael Bruce and Alice don't get along? Is it he? I think. Well, did you ever read Michael Bruce's book? I never got to. I mean, it's been out of print for forever. I still can't get a copy I have of it. it. I have it, and it's signed. Uh, it's basically a hit piece on Alice Cooper, pretty much. Does he take a lot of credit for the success and almost make it seem like he, he takes, wrote? I haven't wrote, read the book in a while, but he takes almost all the credit, and he's, and he's very bitter in the book. Okay, well, that makes sense. And then. right after I finished reading the book, I got on, I looked, I googled Michael Bruce, michaelbruce.com, yeah. and the entire front page of the website was written by his ex-manager who uh about this long story about it how michael bruce befriended a crack a bunch of crack people and uh no befriended befriend not befriended of crack people he befriended a super fan and took him for all his money and bought crack with it and uh he just had bad things to say about michael bruce and he hij he basically hijacked michael bruce's web page wow yeah. yeah so i'm guessing that's why he's not in the movie, but I'm probably that they, maybe not though, because Alice Cooper seems seems like he wouldn't have, um, wouldn't have, but Shep Gordon might have hard feelings about it. So there could be some there, yeah, because it's not a very, it's not the Christian thing to do, is it, to not forgive, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then again, maybe also Michael Bruce wanted a lot of money to be in the movie. Maybe so. Maybe he's one of those guys like a uh, he's hard to hire, you know, for those kind he, of things. Michael like Bruce would, um, probably um doesn't have a lot of money, I'm guessing. He doesn't have as much money as he he looks like he, he, I saw a video foot I don't I don't want to get ahead of myself. So that's sure, like sure. I don't think Michael has a lot of money and he probably would love to get the original Alice Cooper group back together and um would use that to get as much money as he could. Probably the same reason why um, the original guys in KISS didn't get back together for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But we won't go into a KISS territory. Yeah. I mean, at least, at least, at least the band played with Alice for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's something there. So, But that's but obviously not, did for Bruce appearance play, sake. Michael Bruce played with them too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they had Steve yeah. Hunter sitting in for, for Glenn. Yes. Okay, so you get to Dennis Dunaway. And then what do you say? Well, I, I didn't really get to talk to Dennis very much. I, I started off, of course, thank you for coming. I, I thanked everybody for coming to our town because there there's a mini book tour going on, but the, uh, this was kind of a schlep from what I understand. So I just thanked them all for coming. Like, I just can't believe I got a chance to see you guys kind of thing. So I'm starting off with Dennis and then it turned it. And th that's when the guy was like, Dude, there was, they had a pro photographer guy taking pictures. That way people didn't have to fuck around with their right. phones. Right. So it was very organized. And so, so did they email the guy, you the picture or something or what? Yeah, the guy, but I heard a guy in my ear going, Would you like a picture? And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, sure. So I turned around and get the picture with him. You really only had a chance to get a picture with Dennis. That was the whole thing. Okay. That was kind of slightly disappointing because it had been nice to have it, you know, all three at the same time, but that would have made the thing go a lot longer. So I, I get it. Oh, he said all the pictures will be on Facebook, didn't he? Yeah, and they all are. My picture looks terrible. Don't look it up. So. Okay, I was I was we were in line for hours and I sweat my balls off and and I look it so yeah. But go ahead. So you so you so then what? So after everybody gets their book signed, then what? Yeah, we actually had to. We all went. We had to go outside the store and wait for a little bit. I'm looking at pictures on Facebook. Yeah, is there a chick in the entire room? <laughs> 
It's all dudes getting their books signed. There were actually oh, a handful other of women, besides- but mostly it's like 50 and 60 year old yeah. old guys. Rock and yeah. roll geeks. Was, like I felt young and I'm 36. <laughs> there he they sign more things besides just books. A lot of people have posters and um Oh yeah. records. Yeah. Oh, I, I got the, they, they they actually allowed you three total items including the book, which I thought was really nice. Oh, okay. And so people got some vinyls signed and all One that kind of stuff. I actually just I had a book and a book for a coworker friend who's a big Alice Cooper group fan. So uh, nice guy, happy to do it for him. And the only thing I wanted signed by him, I actually got an an insert of the billion dollar baby bill from the uh-huh. vinyl. Right. And I had it blown up a few years ago, uh, thinking, oh, that'd be cool to have get signed at some point, or just even just to hang it up in general. So um, they all three signed it. So. Now it's kind of like a thing like, man, I want to get everybody possible to sign it. So I actually have uh, – this is how much of a fucking Alice nerd I am. I want, of course, at some point to get Alice to sign this bill that I now have signed. But I actually have the back of the bill printed up too. So anybody that's ever played or currently playing with Alice Cooper will be signing the back of the bill hopefully at some point. So okay. that's that's like on the checklist. So after everybody gets their book signed, then what happens? Um, they, they all send us outside for a little bit and they're like, you know, we got to get set up and, uh, everybody leave. They're getting ready to play. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. They, they, they kicked us out of the store for a little bit so they could, uh, move the chairs to the side and then get all the, you know, get the sound check real quick. And then they're going to start playing. And then, uh, after everybody's waiting out in the parking lot, uh, everybody's standing out in the parking lot. Yeah. We're all just hanging out in the parking lot. They were giving people free beers, by the way. That's always very nice. uh, that's not trouble kind or anything, of beer? though, is it? <laughs> what kind of beer? It was some like a uh, local brewery, or I think actually some some brewery from I want to say Colorado actually volunteered. I think to do this, or they were a friend of somebody that organized this. In exchange for the promotion, they just drove down there. Ah, I saw the and picture gave of out you. free I just, beers. I just came across the picture of you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wearing a Rolling Stones shirt. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> you look like a yeah. total nerd. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, eh. That's, yeah, you got that's, two books and a, and a billion-dollar baby's bill signed. Oh, you can see the bill? Okay. Yeah. I, I <laughs> looked at it for a split second. The big shit-eating face on your, on you. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I really got to lose some weight. I, I, uh, I feel like shit, <laughs> like a pitcher. Go ahead. Okay, so everybody's hang, hanging out in the park a lot, bonding, drinking some beers. Yeah. And going back real quick, you were talking about how Michael Bruce looks and is in a way. Yeah. Neil and Dennis look very well aged, very happy. Yeah. Very Michael relaxed. looks a little bit old and looks like he's gone through a little bit of drug phase. Yeah. So I would yeah. believe that, honestly. Yeah. Anyway, moving away from that. Um, yeah. So they put us out in the parking lot. There's people drinking beers. Oh, here's a, here's a fun story. You'll like this because you, you like a, a, a some weird stuff that went on in this line. When it when it turned out that they were gonna, uh, uh, well, okay, rewinding back, there was a really killer door prize that was given out, and it was it, you had your vouchers numbered when you bought them anyway, so they basically just raffled the numbers, and there's this huge door prize, and one of the big parts of the prize was the complete Alice Cooper Studio CD box set, the one 1969 through 1983, great item. Uh, with the mini vinyl replicas inside, and it was signed by Alice. Is that the uh, two hundred dollar thing with t- it's the desk? No, not the old school desk okay, box set. Okay. But this is like a Rhino release of the complete albums, all the way f- starting with Pretty for You through Dada. Right. Okay. And it, it's a great set, like little mini replica vinyl things that hold the CDs in them. And uh, Alice had signed it. I guess the last time he he met Alice. So. They gave that away to some random guy, and so this and, and a book, you know, I guess just in case you didn't have a book, which I didn't under, understand that. I think the book was signed by Alice. That was that, yeah, that was it. So this this dude uh, wins the door prize, and he's all happy and rightfully so. And he even gave the book that he bought away to this little kid that was in line with his parents, so he could have his own book. And I thought that was really nice. Uh, but I guess he had had too many free beers. And when they had said at some point they were going to cut the line off, he went right up to the front and started dealing on the event guy. And he got kicked out. What do you mean dealing? 
he just started yelling at him, and, and and I didn't hear the conversation, but apparently he started yelling obscenities at him. Oh, nice. So the, he, the guy who won the door prize got thrown out and didn't get to see the uh, jam. <laughs> right. He Bummer. got kicked out of the thing. He didn't have to relinquish his prize, which I thought was interesting, but he did get tossed out of there pretty Bummer. well. And I even saw him in the parking lot afterwards, so I'll tell you about that later. Uh, okay, so they finally let everybody back in, and... Yeah. And it was just like, it was kind of a mad rush to, they, I thought they were going to let people in by the numbers, you know, which I thought was going to be the thing the whole night, but it wasn't. And so the numbers didn't make any sense, honestly. Uh, but that all being said, I mean, you know, it's it's a huge mob. What are you going to do, I guess? So I kind of ran there as soon as I could. Let me, and, let me ask you this. Yeah. Was there any thoughts that possibly Alice might show up cause since he was doing a gig somewhere near there, I think? Yeah, and, and the light bulb kind of went off for me, honestly, about a week or two before because the Motley Alice tour really isn't on my radar anymore because I already went to it last year. I, we went to see it in Shreveport, Louisiana in a small place. Uh, it was a better show that way, I think. But uh, I was like, oh, my God, Alice is playing tomorrow with Motley and they have a day off today. So it was kind of like I started to hear rumors, even from you know friends of the friends. Was like, there chatter in the parking lot that maybe Alice would show up, since maybe there was a limo backstage or something like that, or behind in the parking lot, or no a sign of a limo. The street? Uh, there were people. There were definitely people keeping an eye out. But from what I understood, it was almost understood at some point that some of the current members, like Ryan Roxy, Tommy Hendrickson, Glenn, Nita, uh, might be there. Uh, no word on Alice, but the rumor, of course, started getting around, and the buzz was getting there. And someone actually yelled uh, yelled out when there was like, "Anybody have any questions?" And someone said, "Yeah, is Alice here?" And the guy goes, "Alice has a day off today, but that's all I could say. I can't promise you either way." So <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, so y'all jump back, y'all run back in. Yeah, I staked out a part uh, a space like on the extreme side of the stage, which was like. You could see everything that was going on on stage, but you weren't in front of the PAs or anything, because the the front space was already totally taken up, and you know, I I got a really nice spot on the side. So. All right, and then they go into it's three piece. They're all set up, ready to go. Michael's gonna sing lead vocals, and then the band kicks into Caught in a Dream, and yep. I'm having a great time. I I get chills and, listening and to Caught in a Dream. And Michael Bruce's guitar tone sounded great. It sounded like it like sounded like the real Michael Bruce guitar tone, didn't it? It really did. And uh, man, watching I, I was as much as I love their playing and much as I love Dennis's playing, some of the most original bass lines ever. I I got a, I got caught watching Neil. The Neil was a, a pleasure great to watch. Drummer. He's just a surgeon in there. The guy's a great drummer. <laughs> oh. And even on something that's not that complicated, like Cotton and Dream, I'm just watching him, and he's really just attacking those drums, and it's just so fun to watch. But everybody sounded great. They honestly did, and they harmonized well together, too. Uh, well, Michael didn't sound great singing vocal, singing that lead uh, on that song. Yeah, but he's not a, he's not a lead singer. By I'm trip, Cotton so. a Dream, so I... <laughs> but his guitar playing sounded great. So then they, they play Cotton a Dream, and... Uh, Everybody's going, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm like, this is great. Even if this is all I got to see, I mean, it was worth it coming out even just to meet him. But now I've heard him play, and now it's kind of a complete moment. And then without any warning at all and no announcement, the back door opens up. Uh, the event guy comes walking out, and Alice Cooper himself shows up right then and there, walks out on stage, and the place went nuclear. It was amazing yeah. i'm just he's right he walked five feet in front of me to get to the stage uh -huh. and then yeah. once they started playing with alice oh dude it yeah be my lover right off the bat yeah be my lover which they haven't i i don't think they i've never seen him play that and didn't alice say they never they play, hadn't played that song in like 40 years or something it was either that one or Is It My Body? He yeah, Is It My Body? Is way. It My Body? Yeah. Be yeah. My Lover is one of my favorite Alice Cooper tunes. Do, do, uh, yeah. Bow, well, go, bow, ahead. go ahead bow, if you bow, want. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> she walked into the room. I don't know her. Yeah, play it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe three or four or five or six. Or, didn't he say something like that? Yeah, yeah. He, that's what uh, he does now with And it. they sounded. Like the old Alice Cooper group, 
Yeah, it sounds cliche, but they it's like they just played a show yesterday or something. It or they've been doing magical. this for four it decades. It sounded so much better than Alice Cooper's touring group. Nothing against Alice Cooper's, tour, groupers, uh, Alice Cooper's touring group. They sound great, but this has separation, sparseness, rawness, and it just sounded absolutely amazing. At least the stuff that I saw on yeah. the... On the uh, uh, on the periscope yeah and and two quick things um alice did bring along speaking of his current touring band ryan roxy yeah filling in for lead guitar for glenn yes. and i think if anybody deserves to be on that stage subbing for glenn even though you can't sub glenn but if you had to ryan roxy has put in the the years and he respects the material, and he absolutely deserved to be on that and stage. And the Eyes of Alice Cooper album is the closest throwback to the original Alice Cooper sound of yeah. any of the later Alice Cooper albums. Absolutely, and some of that stuff on Dirty Diamonds deserves that too. And Eyes of I Alice even Cooper talked. To, I talked to Ryan opinion, but... about that in February because I actually met Ryan at a headline show that they had played over uh, near Fort Worth, and I asked him, "Will you please?" Write some more new songs with Alice because I feel that Alice needs you as as a as a as a remembrance to his vintage material. You know, like in whatever way I said it, I said, please, I just hope you're writing some more stuff with Alice. That's all. Yeah. Because he he gets it. And and also about the new band, I think that the current touring band that he has currently, like this day, is the best band he has had top to bottom since the original band. That band is really, really good. Yeah, They're Chuck amazing. Garrick uh, is pretty true to Dennis's uh, bass parts. Yeah, he's yeah. his adopted son, for sure. I mean, and he loves Dennis, and Dennis loves him, and I, I love that there's a big love fest with those two guys. And like I said, this band's amazing. Glenn is an amazing drummer. Nita's a ridiculous guitar player. Ryan and Tommy are amazing. And they, they all put out like great material by themselves. So even with Alice, you put that in there, and it's just, I think they're a force. They really are. All right. Uh, well, so they so they played, how many songs did they play? I'm sure on those pictures online, there's, there is a picture of the set list somewhere, but off the top of my head, um, I know they played Be My Lover, Isn't My Body. Oh, and the, one thing that really got me going for a second there, they played 18 somewhere in there, like the, the third or fourth song. And I honestly thought they were going to start playing Second Coming for some reason because it starts off with that don 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 you know. Uh huh. Right. Then going, and I got then really going into for, Bout of Dwight Fry. Yeah, it's and I really thought coming. that was going to happen, and it didn't. So it was, that it's was okay. In my head, a letdown. But I'm glad they played Be My Lover. I'm actually surprised they played Be My Lover. Yeah, and just that swagger that especially the rhythm section puts into it. You can just hear it. Yeah. Even when you listen to Hollywood Vampires at the end when school's out, when Dennis and and, uh, and Neil are back on there, you can just hear it. You can hear them on there. Yeah. Even if you didn't know they were on it, you can just hear that classic shuffle and that bass line. And that's, there's only two people that can do that. And then, of course, we got schools out, elected. Elected was apparently a last-minute decision because – Ryan supposedly talked them into coming out and doing one more song, and it turned out to be elected. So, so the audience was thrilled, to say the least, right? After it was over, did did Alice disappear, or did he hang out and talk to people, or what? He got whisked away pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, he was out the door, and some of the other guys were still there, I know. And then, like, uh, they basically they had a car waiting like right outside the exit, and he was out of there, which I understand. I, I really do. Um, some of the other guys went in the next car. It was, I think there was like three different cars because, like I said, everybody but Nita was there from the current band. They were there. I was standing right behind Tommy and Ryan and Chuck. And you, you, you saw Chuck get on stage and do harmonica on Schools Out, too, by the way, which that was a lot of fun to see. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, Nita wasn't there because Nita had a guitar clinic uh, over on the other side of town. So, But I guess I guess she got held up. But I, obviously, she probably would have been there. And Glenn was there too, the current drummer, Glenn Sobel. I have to mention him especially because I went out to the back parking lot just just in case, you know, maybe right. I can catch somebody. Yeah. And you know, I, I yelled like over a super at Glenn. Super groupie. Totally, totally. I'm not. I'm not going to deny was it. Was the wife with you? Uh, no, the, the the wife actually. Uh, she was already in bed because she had to be early. She has to get up at four thirty in the morning. Did you on wake her days. up when you got home to tell her the good news. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was aware that I was probably going to have a really great night, and she's cool. With it. She would have hated it honestly if she was there, not for the music, but you know, it was kind of nuts to butts in there, and I could barely handle it. And she's not good with the crowd, and I'm really not either. But she's really not good with the crowd. Did, and it was real hot and sweaty, too. It was just like, ugh. So after this was over, people were streaming out just all thrilled, right? Oh, like, God. We just it saw was, history. And and here's the funny part. Some people got their autographs and left. Dumbasses. So it went from nearly 300 people to just about 200 people. I don't even know if there was even 200 people there once the band started playing, honestly. So there you have the baseball card collectors versus the real fans. So when it comes down to it, only about 200 people are going to stick around for just Neil, Bruce, and uh, Michael Bruce and What Dennis. time did they play? What time? What was the time of day? What time did they go on? They probably went on stage 10-ish, okay. 10, something like that, about 10 o'clock our right. time. Well, people had to go to work and stuff. Yeah, it was it was a school night and a work night. It was a Tuesday night, so it definitely separated the uh, the fans from the boys. Did it? But one last question before I let you go, Joy Rock and Roll, because I'm gonna I'm doing in the middle of a show. Or at least oh, I, at I, least I, I will sorry. be when at least I will be when this plays. <laughs> Did anybody start uh, having conspiracy theories about there's going to be a reunion of the original Alice Cooper group? There has been no talk of this at all. It was a special event, and what makes it even uh, better for me personally and for anybody that was lucky enough and had the honor to be there, it's Rock History Plus. This didn't happen in Los Angeles. This didn't happen in New York or Chicago. or uh, it, it occasionally has happened in Phoenix, but it just doesn't happen very much. And I don't believe even when it happens in Phoenix – it's Alice and Michael plus Neil and Dennis. This was a very, very special moment. Well, I her, I, I'm probably the only one who's having that conspiracy theory that there, may be, that there may be an original Alice Cooper group reunion, but I would certainly love to see that. I, I think like the next night or the night before, there's, they came up, uh, Michael and Dennis got up on stage and played uh, Schools Out or something with them. But it wasn't the same because the entire band, the entire current band was up there with them. I want to see just those guys. And you can throw Ryan Roxy up there too to play Glenn's part because Ryan's great. Absolutely. But I would like to just see them and just playing the old songs. Not yeah. even any makeup. They don't even have to put on any makeup. Just no, no. on the stage playing those tunes. I'm glad you brought that up because that was the other really special thing about this. And not that Alice Cooper, the man, or and, Vince. And his I, voice, sound, I'm sorry to interrupt, but his voice with those guys behind him, his voice sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and he's been, and Alice, his voice, I think he ha was having vocal issues about five or six years ago, but I saw the headline tour this year and Alice is back on those vocals. Uh, really, really good. And really sounding vintage again. And so I'm glad to see that. But like I said, well, when I saw him there performing with the guys, I didn't see Alice on stage. I really believe that I saw Vince up there. And it was just like old friends having a good time and doing what they like to do together. Yeah. And that was what made it real special. Another thing that's a theory of mine, why his voice sounds better with those guys I think the current group tunes down a half a step, and I think the original Alice Cooper group, I could be wrong because I, I didn't play along to it, but I could be wrong, but I think the original Alice Cooper, even when they played that night, they were doing in, in 440 regular tuning. I could be wrong on that. It's, just, it's a theory of mine. Yeah, I think they do tune down slightly, but I've yet, I haven't seen a lot of Heritage Ags lately that don't tune down because of the exact same well, But I'm reason. thinking that when they played at the record store, they did not tune down. It didn't sound like it, and I'm I'm a guitar and piano guy, so it, it did not sound down tuned at all. Not even for Michael. <laughs> uh, and and if I may get into a, just a little bit of controversy, which I know you love to do on the Rock and Roll Geek oh, yeah, Show. Oh yeah, yellow journalism is what I'm known as. Go ahead. <laughs> I know that term. <laughs> um, I went to school, so uh, I I'm not going to publicly name names, but there are some people that live in this area that really think there's something and just because they get into a lot of shows maybe for free and they get to meet a lot of people uh i was there the whole late afternoon the whole evening and even just like about a half hour to 45 minutes afterwards 
And uh, some people try to say, I was there. And I saw somebody do that especially. And boy, you uh, you weren't there. Who because, are you talking uh, about? Is this somebody I might know? No, 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 okay. no. It's nobody you would know. All right. I it's, hope it's, I hope you never know. All right. But it's like, local. it's funny. It's funny to see people that have to be such status. Was it another podcaster? Things like this. Sorry. Another podcaster. Uh, I think they might be now, but that that's uh, nothing I'm going to get into. But you know, people. There's people that try to claim that they're at history, and you know, maybe they are sometimes, but. Not uh, not that night. And I remember I just kind of – it was one of those things where I kind of commented on there like, huh. I commented on his post saying, I saw I was there all night and I, I didn't see you. Why didn't you say hello? You know, kind of douchebaggy, you know. All right. Well, and, Joey Rock and Roll has called you out, motherfucker. The gauntlet is down. Yeah. So even it's though – uh, I know you're though, a wrestling fan. Yeah, you're going to have yeah, a exactly. cage – a, a three dar a three one. three round takedown. Yeah, what, do you, what do you call it? <laughs> yeah. He's coming for you at uh, what's the big wrestling match? At WrestleMania. <laughs> right? WrestleMania. Joy Rock and Roll's coming for you, motherfucker. I'll take you out of Cowboy <laughs> Stadium next year because that's where it's going to be anyway. And he's so. bu- he's bulking up for the get for the match. Yeah. Oh, he's but eat- Joey's it- eating a lot so he can be ready for you on this match. Yeah, so I uh, forgot I said that, and then the next day I saw the dude posting that he was at the Molly show, which he was because he had pictures to prove it, right? And I went back and checked that other thing. Fucker deleted his post. All right, well, like he wasn't taking credit for being there anymore. That see that that that's funny. All isn't right, it? well, Facebook wars never never amount to much. So no, but I I I did uh, I did trash Joel Osteen yesterday on uh, Sirius. That was a lot of fun. I got a lot of likes for that. I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. Okay. He's a shyster. He's a, All right. he's a con artist. Okay. All right. Well, Joy Rock and Roll, thank you for that 40 minute show report. That's going to take this, going to be an extra long Rock and Roll Geek show tonight because Joy Rock and Roll's uh, 40 minute Alice Cooper diatribe. I appreciate it, man. I wish I was there. I, I wish you were there too. Like I said, I even thought about messaging you to come out, but you know, it's like one of those things that's like, hey, it was. Well, I wouldn't have come out if it, yeah, if I, if it you was. would think it would just be a book signing, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if you'd have known, I'm sure you would have figured it out. I, I just want to say before I go, Michael, uh, even though I've I've been a regular caller to the show, sorry, not this year, but I will I will change that. That's and all right. I've, ne- I've never stopped listening. You were the first show that I listened to, the first show I ever subscribed to. You're my main influence for podcasting, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I've never actually guested on the show before until now, and I want to thank you for the honor. And thank you for the influence, my friend. All right. What's the name of your podcast? Oh, yeah, that's right. Please, uh, everybody out there, subscribe to Rock Strikes 10. It's free on iTunes, and and that's pretty much what you need to know. Facebook, Rock Strikes 10. All right. You haven't badmouthed me on Rock Strikes 10, have you? I never have. Matter of fact, I I pay tribute to you on the show. Uh, I never rip off your show, ever. But whenever I talk about a record, I actually play along with the Rock and Roll Geek scoring card at home. Oh, you do? Okay. And I use that as a measuring tool for how I rate an album as well. I never rip off your show to where I track it on the whole episode. I'll play a song off of a record, and I'll just tell you what I scored it per per your system. And I actually give you credit every single time because you are the Howard Stern of Rock and Roll Podcast. There you You go. You are the innovator, and you are the man. Okay. All right. Well, the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system is very scientific. Okay. Joy- it really is. Yeah. Like, it, it has co- measured well, the albums that I listen to uh, multiple times through the year. The highest scores are always the ones that you listen to. It, it, there's no flaw in that system. Yeah. It seems to be, it seems to work okay. Yeah. All right. Joy Rock and Roll, thank you for coming on. Thank you for the honor and good luck with the book. All right. I can't wait to read it. Yeah. Well, don't hold your breath. <laughs> It's not not that easy writing a book about your life. If you want to do the masterpiece of shit theater again on the audio book, you let me know. I can play any character you want. Oh, that sounds good. I'm, sounds good. <laughs> All right, Joey. I'll talk to you later, friend. All right. Stay frosty, friend. Stay frosty. All right. Bye. All right. Well, there you go. That was a uh, long phone call, but I thank you, Joey Rock and Roll, for calling in. I wish I would have been at that show. Man, I would have been a great time. <sighs> 
If I only lived in Dallas, man, that would have been so nice. All right, let's close out. This show's been going on. What we got? We're almost at two hours now. We got. I got to close this thing out. All right, let's end with a, an Alice Cooper tune. What shall we? All right, this is from. They put out like a super box set. It was in like a um, a little school desk called Old School. I'm gonna play something from that. Pardon me, I'm burping at this fine Tecate. I'm going to play something from old school. Before I, before I play it, let me tell you how you can reach me. Uh, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Let me know if you think my singing sucks. All right, I'm sure you will all agree, but okay. You know what the subject line is. Uh, call me, area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. You can find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. Find me on the Facebook, r r Geek. Find me on the Twitter, r r Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. I think that's enough ways to reach me. Oh, you can also find me on Periscope occasionally. I, I Occasionally, if I go to a show, I will pull up the Periscope and play a song. I did ACDC, and I did a song from The Darkness. I think I'm r r Geek on Periscope. So look for me on the Periscope. I don't do it that often, but... You never know, friends. Just follow me on Periscope, and I might. Also... Brand new podcast I'm doing with Dave Slusher called Mad at Dad at madatdadpodcast.com. All right, that's enough plugs. Here is something from old school. This is uh, I'm 18, which they played at at that record store, Good Records. I think that's what the record store is called. This is this is a uh, this is the Love It to Death pre-production of I'm 18. We'll talk to you next time, friends. Stay frosty.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs>